guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting up a few containers that will take us all the way through winter. And that's just something to be considering when we're getting ready to transition our summer containers into more fall things. If we plant them up right with the right things, we can have them last through fall, winter, and on into next year. So I've chosen three really beautiful evergreens to put in these pots. First of all, these I just recently got. These are galvanized ribbed containers and there's three sizes. So I've got a large, a medium, and a small. And I plan to put these in a grouping near our kitchen door because it's where we walk the most. And I just want something really beautiful, but I don't want to plant something that's only going to be pretty for a couple of months. You know, fall planters are gorgeous with mums and things like that, um, but they just don't last. And so if we plant some gorgeous evergreens in there, we'll have them for lots and lots of months. Um, so these are actually solid on the bottom. So you can see there, I'm going to have to um, drill some drainage holes, which is what I plan to do. You could plant everything up in like a black plastic pot and then sink it down in there if you wanted to. Um, that's totally like up to you depending on how you wanna do things. But I feel like putting drainage holes in this actual container is the best because water can still flow out. Because if you use these as just a pot to hide kind of an unsightly one, you'll still have water pooling at the bottom and you'll still have to pour it out. And I just don't want that maintenance. Um, so I wanna go over all of these plants. I've got a whole bunch of gorgeous stuff here. Um, so the evergreens I've chosen, first one for the larger pot is called a baby blue spruce. And I chose this specifically because I have a spot out in my landscape picked for this. These are a type that don't grow super big, like 10 feet by maybe six feet. So they're a great accent evergreen. They're also rated down to a zone three. And that's the thing, when you are planning on overwintering um, something like a perennial shrub, evergreen tree, whatever it might be, it's a rule of thumb to choose something that's rated two zones lower than your current growing zone. So I garden in a zone five. So choosing something that's a zone three gives us that extra buffer because the root balls of these plants are not being insulated from all sides like they would be if they were planted out in the ground. Um, so we just have to keep that in mind. Now you can risk it if you want to, like I love to plant boxwoods in containers um, and they are only a zone five, most of them that I'm aware of. Um, you can do that still, but just know that there may be a little bit more care involved to know that you might be risking losing it a little bit more than something that's tougher. So like this one right here, this is called a gem box inkberry holly, which I love. I adore this plant. They look like a boxwood to me. Um, but they don't have problems that I know a lot of you guys have with boxwoods, like boxwood blight and um, some other things. Um, I don't even know. There's like a moth that attacks boxwoods. We don't have that in our area, thankfully, but this is a really good alternative. Now this is only a zone five. It grows in zones five through nine. So I am risking it with this one, but I did put one in a basket. I sunk it down in a basket last January and it's still in the basket. In fact, I can see it. It's right in front of me and it did great all winter. Um, and then the third one here, this is called an Anna's Magic Ball. Um, Arborvita. I love the color. I love the three of these together, the icy blue, the deep green, and then this beautiful yellow. So this one is also a zone three, zones three through seven. So these two right here are particularly good for this project. And then I've just got a bunch of gorgeous annuals. Now I have chosen things that typically can take a little bit of frost. Um, so I typically do not put potato vine or coleus, those sorts of things in fall containers because the first whiff of cold and they wanna shrivel up and just die. Um, so we wanna choose things that can take a little bit more. Most of these can. So like this right here, now this is actually a new variety of Superbells coming out next year. It's a compact. Superbell's Compact White. I actually want to do a specific video on this type of plant because there are more colors. So be watching for that probably here um, soon. But I thought this would be such a perfect option in a smaller container because it does not grow like the typical Superbells do. It won't overtake. So it's really good for lots of smaller type growing situations. I've got asparagus ferns here, Supertunia White Charm, I think. Yeah, Supertunia White Charm. I've got Dichondra Silver Falls. I've got Diamond Frost Euphorbia, which this one's a little bit more cold sensitive, but it should last through a light, light frost. I've also got some Plectranthus over there. The Swedish Ivy is another name for it. It's got that nice icy blue and then Persian Shield for a little pop of color. I wanted to keep this all kind of in foliage tones, yellow, blue, green with some white bloom, white blooms. But I thought that Persian Shield might be a nice little pop. Um, so the first thing I need to do is drill holes in these containers. I've got my drill here and a metal drill bit attached. I think I'll do three. Holy moly. 
So this right here, I believe is a 7 16 size metal drill bit. You do not need something this long. We happen to have this because this is from Aaron's cable installing days. Um, so it's handy though, because you can stand up and get the right, um, like I can put it more weight behind it when I'm standing. Um, so it makes the holes a little bit easier to drill. So I just wanted to let you know, um, handy, handy to have one of these around. So now I'm just gonna fill each one of these containers with soil and I've got my slow release fertilizer out here, which is still important to use because we're early, early enough in the season um, where it will help feed our plants. So my soil is just right over here. I don't think I'm gonna need two bags, but we'll see. This is the slow release I'm using. I add it to every single container. I do not measure anymore. There is a guide on the back though that tells you based on the inches of container how much you need to use. And I do use this like rather than Biotone starter fertilizer just because I think it's habit. I use this whenever I'm planting annual flowers in containers. And since I'm planting annuals, this is what I go for. Um, Biotone starter fertilizer that I use to plant everything out in the landscape would probably work just great in here, um, especially because I've got some evergreens going in. Um, but I think either way you're fine. So now I'm gonna plant my evergreen centerpiece first and I'm probably gonna take this little bamboo stake out and probably just uh, plan on staking it when I plant it out in the garden later. Should have brought it. Naren, you got a knife on you? I need to go grab a cutter of some kind. Oh, yeah, this worked out great. Let's have a nice long blade. So that root system is looking pretty good, but it's pretty root bound. So I'm just gonna break this root system up just a little bit, not a ton. Hopefully it'll just fit right down in the well I made for it. Okay, but I gotta come around the front though. Before I tamp this in, I wanna make sure I really like the way it's positioned. It's a little wonky with the one long branch, but I think that's pretty. Doesn't that look pretty just all on its own? The other thing, so when um, these annuals die off finally, like probably I'm expecting about after Thanksgiving, um, is typically when I'll pull some of the tougher annuals, um, I will top dress the soil with pine cones. So it'll look really cute and festive. And another thing you can do, and another consideration is the material of container that you're using can kind of indicate how much insulation your root ball is getting as well. If you've got a really thick concrete container versus a really thin metal container, concrete container is gonna provide a little bit more protection to the roots. These thinner pots, thin plastic, they're just not quite as, um, I don't know, they're just not quite as protective to the root system. So you can do a couple things. You can get a thick layer of burlap. You can get burlap sacks sometimes at your garden center, at a craft store. Um, just wrap them around the container, put a big bow around them. It looks festive that way. Some people use bubble wrap and then just a single layer of burlap around the outside. Um, or you can move them somewhere more protected, you know, closer to the house where it stays a little bit warmer, put them on the south side where they get a little bit more sun, um, that sort of thing. All right, so now in this container, I think I'm planning on doing the Persian Shield and the Supertunia White Charm, and we'll see how it goes. I may put something else in here too. Also, if you have an unexpected dip in temperature and you're kind of worried about your evergreens, like especially in smaller containers, you can go ahead and put them in like a uh, unheated shed or garage, or like I could put them in our greenhouse, which is unheated. That way they get a little bit more protection. You don't want to put them somewhere that's way too warm though, because that can shock them as well. If they're going back and forth from outside to somewhere warmer, um, that's really not the most ideal situation. Um, so, I mean, just picking something that's rated properly, you know, two zones lower and then putting it in the right spot can really make a huge difference. So Persian Shield here, now these usually grow quite large, um, not expecting a ton of growth since we're so late in the season, um, but I think that this is a really pretty color contrast. And one other tip while I'm kind of getting these planted is um, you do want to make sure that they maintain uh, some kind of moisture in their root system. Um, you can't let them dry completely out and I know it's the last thing on our minds to think about watering our containers in the winter so I put a reminder in my phone for every two weeks to go out and check my containers because we have long stretches of time where we won't get any precipitation at all. So I'll toss a little water in the container and it really helps them get through and also you want to make sure like if they're underneath an eave like if they're by a front door and they're kind of protected and they get no precipitation just plan on watering them every couple weeks. You don't have to drench them. Just make sure to put enough in there to moisten the root ball a little bit. In fact, let me just plant all of these containers up since we've already kind of talked about the plants and then we'll take a look at the finished product.
Don't these look really amazing? I just love how they came together. Each one of them is a little bit different, but they carry some of the same colors so that they look like a group. So in the largest one, again, I put a baby blue spruce, super tunia white charm, diamond frost euphorbia, Persian Shield, and then some Gold Creeping Jenny. Uh, now I did put a lot of annuals in this container in the fall You can and spring months. You can usually get away with that because they're not gonna put on as much growth as your summer containers would. Um, and then by the time it gets really cold and the Diamond Frost has kind of died back a little bit, that's when the Super Tuner White Charm will have filled in and I'll have enough bulk down there. It'll look really pretty even without that at that point. In the medium-sized container, Anna's Magic Ball Arborvita, I highly recommend this plant. I have a couple planted out in our landscape and they're so beautiful. I mean, only growing 10 to 15 inches tall and wide, having these little tiny accent evergreens tucked into your flower beds are so pretty because unlike your other perennials, they're still there in the winter looking really pretty. And I underplanted that one with Persian Shield and Dichondra Silver Falls. So we've got nice um, color just in foliage right there. And then in the smallest container, I've got the Gem Box Inkberry Holly and then the Compact Super Bells White. Um, so I think they're just a very pleasing blend of plants. I think they look really classic using this really kind of understated color palette. So now all I need to do is move them into position uh, and enjoy them for the months to come. So I hope this video was helpful learning a little bit about what to look for to overwinter things in containers and how to do that and have more success with it. So we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.